Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Nora to explain here, bring you guys another board to a two blue vortex discussion. Today, I want to talk to you guys about why the conversation between boards on Kawaki in the last manga chapter chapter 15 of two blue vortex it has opened up the door for a much larger conversation regarding the fate of board to Zamaki. and as you can tell from the video link this is going to be longer than usual because there's a lot that we got to talk about and i think the burden that boruto is once again being ridden is having placed onto kawaki's shoulders is one that does not get enough attention and love that it deserves from fans which is why in today's newest naruto explain video i want to have a conversation on who between Sasuke and Kawaki truly deserves to be the one who kills Boruto and being fully transparent while I am firmly in the camp that it should be Kawaki if it ever comes down to that I do concede that there has always been a equally if not even stronger argument for Sasuke being the one forced to do it so I do want to give both sides some room to breathe in this video and I'm going to take a neutral stance in this for this video, we're going to be walking through in order the following things. The current state that Boruto is in right now, the growing consensus in universe that Boruto needs to be killed and why, why Sasuke has a strong case of wanting to be the one who particularly kills Boruto and why for his character arc, it would have a massive payoff if Sasuke were to be the one that does it. And finally, why I believe Kawaki should be the one to carry on the burden of killing Boruto if it ever comes down to it, which again, Boruto does use some of the aspects I personally dislike from the cookie cutter gateway shonen. So I do expect for there to be a potential resolvement of all this in terms of getting the happy ending that most shonen tend to go for. But Boruto has shown strong instances of moving away from the established tropes that I do not rule out a bittersweet ending either. In chapter 15 of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, there was a moment where Kawaki and Boruto are talking together and Boruto opens up to Kawaki that things have gotten worse in the last three years since he left Konoha, which is saying a lot just given how bad things were at the end of Boruto Naruto Next Generations. Momoshiki was Dr. Gaslighter who was whispering into Boruto's ear and giving him play-by-play -play commentary and making it a point to go out of his way to push Boruto emotionally for the goal of eventually weakening his mind enough to permanently take over his body, shoving Boruto's consciousness into a small corner of his mind. Since all Momoshiki could do was occasionally hijack Boruto for a short period of time because due to the effects of bringing him back to life after Kawaki killed him, Momoshiki found himself in a position where he could no longer resurrect using Boruto's body when it hit 100% extraction, but he could briefly take control for short periods of time. This, of course, led to the decision by Kawaki to want to finish the job and to kill Boruto again, this time for good at the end of Boruto Part 1, where not only were the thoughts of Momoshiki and Boruto openly merging, but when Momoshiki's soul would manifest outside of Boruto's body, we would see signs that Kawaki could sense the event happening, and Sasuke was implied to be able to sense Momoshiki outside of Boruto too, despite Sasuke no longer having the Rinnegan eye and those powers. With Kawaki openly calling Momoshiki out, back at the condo that team seven was staying at and sasuke sensing momoshiki both inside the hokage office as well as when he and boruto had escaped from konoha both sasuke and kawaki each understood the severity of boruto's situation in part one which has only gotten worse they were some of the first to be able to set aside emotion and come to the cold hard conclusion that boruto needed to die and they weren't the only ones so too did the boruto kage when they learned that boruto had a karma you could see the raikage's wheels turning in his head that they would have problems later on down the line because they were dealing with an unknown alien complication but the kage out of respect for naruto gave naruto a chance to handle the situation with boruto and kawaki and when it progressed to the point where naruto was no longer strong enough to handle the threat that was looming and now they had no clear way to deal with Momoshiki. It was Gara who was the first one to speak up and say the quiet part out loud, which is that Naruto needed to kill Boruto before it ever reached the point of a Momoshiki resurrection. When things hit that dire of a point, Sasuke flat out told Naruto that he regretted not being able to kill Boruto at the time. 
but he wouldn't make that mistake the next time and let his emotions get in the way. Kawaki too reached that same stance. He and Sasuke each loved Boruto and they each came to that conclusion. When he heard Boruto was taking Amado's Byakugan drugs, he understood all those pills did. They served as a balloon payment, which for those of you guys who don't know how finance works, a balloon payment, which I suggest you never do, is basically you buy a home for say, I'm just gonna throw numbers out. So $200,000 and the monthly payment is say $1,200 a month for 30 years. But 10 to 15 years into the loan, there is this $50,000 balloon payment that comes up as a lump sum that is due, that you have to pay that $50,000 or else you lose your home, even if you've made all the payments prior to that. You don't make the payments, you lose the house. Well, that's basically what Amato's pills did here. It just brought in a little extra time to delay Momoshiki from reviving into Boruto's body. But eventually, Momoshiki will still take over. And when Kawaki and Boruto each saw that the pills, they weren't truly working, Boruto asked Kawaki, kill me. Boruto came back to life and Momoshiki was still a problem. At one point, he's taking over to release Kawaki from getting his head cut off by Sasuke and much overlooked is the fact that he was in the process of taking over Boruto's body to slaughter Team 10 before Sasuke saved Boruto, just as Boruto was warning Momoshiki if he ever harmed his friends, he would never forgive him because the karma was spreading against Boruto's will. Now, we learn one year later, when Boruto was 13, when Boruto had attempted to use karma, he felt Momoshiki awaken inside of him, and he has now jumped to the conclusion that if this ever happens again, and that it stands a chance of happening again, Kawaki should kill Boruto because Boruto is a danger. While some fans are quick to say Kawaki's delusional, and that Momoshiki isn't a threat, the narrative is telling us otherwise, but there is this growing inability by a lot of fans to separate their love for Boruto's character and his struggles and journey and to look at the truth about what Kawaki is saying because, because again, there's an attachment to Boruto by the fans which speaks volumes to the character that was created. Kawaki, he's in that moral gray area. He's not wrong that Momoshiki is a threat and he wasn't wrong that Konoha's love for Boruto would prevent them from being able to ever kill Boruto which is what ultimately caused omnipotence to occur and Kawaki took advantage of it in order to make people think that Boruto killed Naruto in order to make it easier to kill Boruto. But it is exactly due to what Kawaki stated about people in Konoha loving Boruto too much that we reached the point where the only two characters who realistically have it in them to kill Boruto are Kawaki and Sasuke. A wild card Sarda, but we can touch on that later on in another video. Don't buy it, but that's a wild card out there. However, between the two, which is the most deserving of ending Boruto suffering if there were ever truly no way to stop Momoshiki or Momoshiki doesn't become Boruto's personal house pet the way that Kurama did for Naruto? Well, there's a strong argument for both characters, and both of them understand that Boruto's life does not outweigh the lives of Billion. Because if Momoshiki ever takes over, he could just snap Kawaki's arms in half and have Kawaki fed to the Ten Tails, and the whole human race would be harvested for a chakra fruit. Billions of people dead. But we're gonna start with Sasuke here. Back when Boruto was revived by Momoshiki, Sasuke took Boruto to speak privately and he apologized to him for being unable to be there when Boruto lost control this last time. Sasuke heard his students' cries back when Ishiki came to Konoha and Boruto was begging Sasuke to save him because he was still being haunted by what happened during the Boro fight. Boruto remember not being in control of his body, but not the details and knowing what was happening to him via Momoshiki erasing his soul. It scared Boruto to know that his body might be used to harm his friends and family. And Sasuke told him that, hey, as your teacher, if it ever comes down to that, then I will kill you to spare you of that agony. Yet when it did come to that point, when Sasuke had to step up to the plate, Sasuke showed how much he truly changed in the 16 years since the end of the fourth great ninja war. Change in most instances, it is a good thing. And it signals progress. It should be applauded and valued. But in this one instance, it became an Achilles heel to Sasuke when it mattered the most. And you can directly say 
Sasuke changed, not just because of Naruto, but also by becoming a husband and a father, because having children directly changes your entire worldview perspective. Sasuke at age 17 wouldn't have hesitated to make the cold logical decision to take out Boruto once Momoshiki took over his body and destroyed his Rinnegan. It doesn't matter, there were still the dojutsu blinding particles lingering that didn't go away until moments after the Rinnegan was destroyed. That 17 year old Sasuke was cold blooded enough he watched Naruto crying these ugly tears as he said goodbye to his father Minato and the whole time he was thinking to himself, don't you cry Naruto because I'm going to send you to meet your parents soon enough. However, a 33 year old Sasuke is not 17 year old Sasuke. 33 year old Sasuke who was a husband and a father couldn't bring himself to make that calculated decision to end a child's life. Despite seeing Boruto being controlled by Momoshiki, Sasuke was able to briefly rise above his shock at seeing Momoshiki controlling Boruto to cut on his eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and briefly fight Momoshiki, but when he saw Momoshiki refusing to absorb any attacks by using Karma, Sasuke cut off his Sharingan while Momoshiki was hiding because he was no longer thinking about how to kill Boruto with something like a Matarasu, but instead he was coming up with a plan to force Momoshiki to absorb enough chakra to give Boruto back control which Momoshiki conceded that would have worked. Sasuke had a couple of moments in that fight where he could have killed Boruto. He should have killed Boruto, but seeing there was a chance to save him, Sasuke set aside the cold logic and his emotions as a sensei, as a husband, as a father, it took over in that moment. He conceded to Naruto days later in the anime original scene that was not in the manga that his feelings for Boruto as his sensei, it prevented him from being able to do the one thing that needed to be done. When Sasuke spoke to Boruto after Boruto almost killed Naruto, Boruto was told by Sasuke that he didn't truly understand the depths of what Boruto was asking Kawaki to do when he told him to kill him. Sasuke understood that anyone who killed Boruto, the beloved son of the seventh Hokage, the child who was not only viewed as the second coming of the fourth Hokage, one of the most beloved Kage in the series, but also he was a boy who was gaining recognition for helping save the village on two separate occasions, quickly carving out his own name the way that sets him apart from just being the Hokage's child, and anyone who killed Boruto would be burdened with that hatred from the villagers. Just as Naruto is becoming a symbol that was bigger than himself and bigger than the Hokage position, Boruto was in the process of doing something similar. It's a lot similar to what you see through Chao Massacre. The lives of the many, they outweigh the lives of the few. The general public would likely never know the truth about Boruto's karma seal and the threat of Momoshiki in terms of what he posed by being revived from Boruto's body. Notice how nobody from leadership has made that public knowledge. From a leadership perspective, Konoha chose to keep that security risk that Boruto posed private to ensure stability for the village and to not cause any panic, which that would have done so. Just as the village never learned the truth about the Uchiha massacre. We can argue whether or not that's the right or the wrong stance to make, but I understand the logic behind it. Sasuke understood that the killer of Boruto would be hated just as Itachi was hated for the Uchiha massacre. And even with Naruto post-war saying that Itachi was a hero without giving full context, the perception still hasn't changed. Itachi is not looked upon favorably by history. Even though, again, Naruto's put an asterisk by it, but people don't know the context behind why. The perception of a young prodigy dying, being murdered, at that, it would lead to severe uproar, even from those who do know the truth, because we've seen it with the reactions with people like Sarda, who know that Momoshiki was reviving and know that it was a threat, yet their love for Boruto, it blinds any sense of logic and reason. That was the whole reason Omnipotence ever got casted. That's why Sasuke was willing to take on that burden. In the eyes of the world, he's already a criminal who is on probation at the discretion of the Hokage and working to earn his redemption for himself as well as his brother's actions as a clan killer. Sasuke carries that burden. Sasuke can carry that load on top of everything else because at the age of 33, people's perception of him, their opinions of him, they are already set. But for someone like Kawaki, 
whose age has never been made official, but he was still clearly a child, Kawaki would have had the chance to write a new narrative about himself as more time passed by. But if Kawaki had been blamed for the death of Boruto, that would end any chance of him rewriting his own story in the eyes of the villagers who were already beginning to turn on Kawaki, view him with suspicion if we go back with what was shown in the Cold Assault arc, which is my yearly reminder that that arc is Boruto's version of the Search of Tsunade arc, and just as that Tsunade arc was super slow but mega important in terms of a setup arc, the Code Assault arc is proving to be much the same. Without that arc, we don't get omnipotence and we don't get this time skip now, which is why Sasuke wanted that burden because he understood those horrible truths. For him, he'd be walking further in the shoes of his brother Itachi, who put the village above his own happiness. He'd be giving Boruto a mercy kill, going off the increasingly high probability that Boruto's situation would only get worse, and that this was not a Kurama situation where the nine tails that would just break loose and they could band together and they could seal him away into a capable body of containing him. There was no stopping Momoshiki. If he got revived using Boruto's body, when Otsuski revived, the whole purpose of their clan law it is to upgrade and grow stronger. They wouldn't be able to stop Momoshiki, who would now be stronger than he was from before. So at the very least, Sasuke understood his duty was to at least prevent Boruto from suffering his worst fear and giving Boruto some control over how he would die, allowing him to die a hero who kept Momoshiki from destroying the entire planet, and Sasuke as Boruto Sensei, he is the one who deserves to do that. After all, as we cover here on the channel, when you read the light novels that are set in the Boruto era and you read behind the lines, or between the lines, both Naruto and Sasuke do acknowledge that they share some of the blame for Boruto's fate even though at the time they didn't know Momoshiki was rewriting Boruto's DNA. All they knew was that Momoshiki did something to Boruto and each of those 33 old men they felt some responsibility for it. Naruto wanted Boruto to get battle experience by giving him the chakra for the Rasengan that killed Momoshiki and Sasuke wanted Boruto, a 12 year old child, on the battlefield so that he could learn a much needed valuable lesson. Each of the Kage and Sasuke who were fighting Momoshiki and Kenshiki they were a representation of a power that was acquired by hard work and perseverance. And Momoshiki and Kenshiki, they were a representation of the path that Boruto was going down, taking cheat codes and shortcuts, and Sasuke correctly thought. Showing Boruto what high-level shinobi combat looked like, it would set Boruto on the right path, and it did. Sasuke's decision led to Boruto getting karma, and so by extension, you could argue Sasuke should be the one to correct the issue that he directly caused. However, that brings me to Kawaki and it makes me say I strongly believe it should be Kawaki who kills Boruto if things ever got to that point. You might hear the Sasuke argument and go, man, this is so open and shut right here. Like there's no debate, Sasuke, if Boruto ever loses control, Sasuke could kill him. And so I'll just say, step back for a second, lend me your ear for the next few minutes while I make this case for Kawaki. So. For Kawaki, it's easy to say Miss Dude's delusional, and you can say that he's wrong, but as we went over earlier, he's not wrong about the situation with Momoshiki. Take your emotions out in terms of how you feel about Boruto. Kawaki is correct. He is, however, wrong in that he took away the choice from Naruto, Boruto's own father, but he, like Sasuke, was willing to bear that hate that came from Naruto being upset at them because they killed Naruto's child. Both Kawaki and Sasuke understood that would come if they killed Boruto. Sasuke saw firsthand when Naruto grabbed him by the collar when Sasuke made it clear next time Momoshiki takes over, Sasuke was going to kill Boruto and that it was inevitable. And Kawaki did kill Boruto after he saw Naruto couldn't raise his hand against his own son. Naruto even went so far as to call Kawaki a demon before it happened. Strong words from someone like Naruto who was called a demon growing up shows you how hurt Naruto was in that moment. Kawaki, from the moment he's ever met Boruto, he's never had control over his karma. And Boruto's karma progression has only gotten worse as more time has gone on. Kawaki's seen it progress at a rate faster than what Kawaki went through and even Code went through. Even though the situations for both were different for obvious reasons, 
Kawaki has seen Boruto as a walking red flag when it comes to karma. Based on everything Kawaki's seen, he has no reason to believe that Boruto will magically, eventually, Wonder Kid control karma, or that he and Momoshiki can start coexisting and start eating Thunder Burgers together. Kawaki, when you strip away everything and look at his character at the bare basics, he is a consequentialist who views this whole situation as the Otsutsuki, they are the ones responsible for everything, even the stuff with the Tintels, it is because of the Otsutsuki. Eliminate the Otsutsuki clan, including himself and Boruto, that will solve the problems in his mind because he's seen enough from Shinobi to know they are ruled by emotion and they can't do the right thing and even if they do have the power, he saw with Naruto that they won't use it. This new generation of Shinobi including Naruto's generation, is not like the Shinobi from Hashirama's era, which is why he said Shinobi are destined to die early. The Shinobi world has changed. If you go back 70 years ago, when Hashirama was still alive and the Hokage, Hashirama would have killed Boruto. That is not up for debate either. Hashirama literally said if his child was a threat to the village, he would kill his child. Boruto telling Kawaki that things have only gotten worse only confirms for Kawaki that his fear of Momoshiki being a problem, it is the truth. This wasn't Kawaki waking up one day and magically deciding, well, that was a tasty breakfast that Hinata made, time for me to go put some shoes on and go kill Boruto. This was a last resort that he didn't want to go down to kill his brother unless he absolutely had to. Their original goal was to free each other of the coma seal and they both promised each other off screen. If it ever came to a point of being completely helpless, they would kill each other in order to prevent the Otsutsuki from taking over. He lost his coma seal, but Boruto still had his. And so their promise, it was still in effect. As Boruto's brother, Kawaki owed it to him. He tried it Boruto's way, against his better judgment, by allowing Boruto to try Amato's chakra pills to suppress the Byakugan and Momoshiki's conversion, but it didn't work. And even Momoshiki mocked it when he spoke to Boruto calling it a meaningless effort. Momoshiki still emerged and was going to feed Kawaki to the Tentails, threatening to break his bones to prevent him from running. And once the chakra fruit harvested and once Momoshiki hit 100% extraction, he was going to eat the chakra fruit and go about his merry way. It quickly became one life being weighed against the lives of billions, potentially trillions when you add in Momoshiki going to other planets after this. And Boruto understood it and so he allowed Kawaki to kill him. We are now at a point three years later in the timeline, after Kawaki had already tried to kill Boruto for a second time and he's seen that despite having three years to do something about it, not only has Boruto's lack of control over Karma gotten worse, but he's now even more afraid of this power and alluding to the fact that Momoshiki could be even more in control than he ever was before, which is dangerous. With Boruto as strong as he is, the idea of a Karma Seal amped up Boruto, who in just base is already scaling high above Jigen, and with Momoshiki's abilities further unleashed, it's Kawaki and Sasuke's worst case scenario being put on full display here, which is why both of them had originally wanted to kill Boruto in part one. And that is something overlooked by fans of Sasuke. Sasuke, it was on the table for him. That's why Kawaki agreed to join forces here. They needed to deal with Jura, who was his ultimate big boogeyman threat. But he also has to monitor Boruto because eventually he's going to have to fight Boruto and he needs both the information as well as the assistance to grow stronger and Boruto offers the best chance to eliminate the threat of Jura who's a bigger threat than Code, someone who Boruto and Kawaki could each easily kill and if they don't do it, Damon would just love to stomp this dude's head in. For Kawaki, he has already gone this far that he can't truly turn back when you look at his character. He and Ada, they already accidentally triggered omnipotence, but he purposely framed Boruto for Naruto's murder. Again, he is a consequentialist. Does not make him a good person. He might have good intentions. He might go about them the wrong way, but he is a consequentialist. He does not care about being liked. And as long as he gets the desired outcome and it's reached, the how and getting to that conclusion does not matter. 
even if it breaks all the morally accepted methods to get there in the process. Kawaki sealed Naruto away and his wife, and by his own words, he's planning to have Naruto kill him after he kills Boruto, and even if Naruto doesn't do it, which we know Naruto will never do that, Kawaki seems to have already prepared a way to get himself killed, because if you read in between the lines of what he said in Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, it's pretty damn obvious. If I need to clarify that in another video, I will. For Kawaki, Boruto is like looking into a mirror. He sees a boy who he secretly wishes that he was that boy, but he also sees a boy who shares the same fate as him, being someone whose body was violated by the Otsutsuki and is merely a tool for them. Had Kawaki's life gone any differently, he'd be the one struggling with that fate of being used by the Otsutsuki from within, the way Boruto is with Momoshiki. He would have been dealing with it with Ishiki, and with Boruto being someone who he views as a brother, there is this willingness, there is this desire to save his brother, even if it means killing him because he knows his brother Boruto would want that because Boruto could never live with himself if Momoshiki took over and harvested a chakra fruit or killed mass amounts of people. Unlike three years ago, where Kawaki took on this burden willingly, suddenly but willingly, this is Kawaki who has had three years to mentally prepare for that burden and the consequences, even if death is low-key a coward's way out, but he lumped himself in as being Otsutsuki. Again, he is a consequentialist in behavior, and in this case, he's an absolutist in terms of behavior because this is absolutist behavior by Darth Kawaki the Obsessed. My fellow Star Wars fans, you catch what I'm referring to there. I feel like because Kawaki has gone so far as to seal away Naruto Hinata, Boruto's parents, if, keyword again being if, I want to put huge emphasis on this, if it comes down to it, because we could always get what I call the cookie cutter, cliche, shonen, happy ending, but it comes down to if this happens and Kawaki needs to be the one who kills Boruto, because he's already taken the steps to harbor the hatred that comes from Naruto and Hinata being upset that their firstborn child has been murdered, even if it's for a good cause. He's taken the steps to prepare for that hate. He's also the one who has the most potential to acquire the power that's needed because only an Otsutsuki is going to be able to kill another Otsutsuki when you just boil it down to the state of the affairs right now because he has limiters on him and a model's ninja tech in his body, meaning that there are additional limits that he could bypass to gain the power to kill Boruto. Assuming, of course, that it does come down to that, which makes the payoff almost as interesting as the Boruto Chapter 15 review here on the left, or as heartbreaking as the new Chainsaw Man Chapter review from my Anime Explained channel where I discuss non-Naruto content. 